Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, we'll go over uh, some data and uh, touch on a couple issues and uh, take some questions. Uh, good news, no new deaths uh, since yesterday. Uh, still the total of 205 of our neighbors that we've lost in the pandemic directly related to COVID-19. Uh, but no new deaths uh, over the last 24 hours and over the weekend. So good news there. Uh, related to testing, we've received 865 diagnostic tests back since yesterday. Our seven-day rolling average for diagnostic tests is 0.63%. Uh, in addition to those tests, uh, Syracuse University has performed over 32,000 pooled saliva tests since the beginning of August. That is not in that count. Uh, we've also tested 3,225 local school district staff as part of our back-to-school testing program. And then between Syracuse University and our own testing last week, uh, we did over 9,000 pooled tests over the last seven days. Uh, from those pooled tests, we only had three positive cases, all from uh, Syracuse University. Uh, and so when you combine the nasal test and the pool test, our seven-day average is 0.33%. Uh, this is important because uh, the saliva pool test uh, sampling is no longer, uh, is probably at some point going to outtake the diagnostic testing. It's easier, it's, it's cheaper, uh, and so uh, when... The, from a data standpoint, the state puts out their New York Forward data. It doesn't include any of the saliva samples. Uh, I got yesterday uh, the Central New York regional positive rate was 2%, driven by mainly SUNY Oswego positive cases. Uh, normally, we don't see a lot of cases in Oswego County. We saw, I think there was over 20 of them. Uh, but at the same time, they had those 20 cases. They did thousands of saliva tests yet those tests weren't counting in the data. So the data was skewed, uh, and the data is skewed as long as saliva tests aren't being done. Uh, SUNY Cortland, saliva tests. SUNY Oswego, saliva. All six of our schools uh, and colleges, for the main part, are using saliva. Uh, and so from the standpoint of uh, wh where we're doing testing and our back-to-school testing, saliva-based testing. So when we look at... Uh, the impact from the macro level on the community, we have to uh, factor in both the diagnostic tests, uh, which are now uh, more of a symptomatic test. The saliva test is the test that's being used uh, for broad screening as well. So uh, that's 0.33 seven-day average when you combine both of them. Uh, very, very good news. Hospitalizations, we have 10 individuals in the hospital, two in the ICU. So let's keep those two individuals in our uh, thoughts and in our prayers. Uh, but certainly 9, 10, 11, these are all, uh, this is all territory we haven't been in in a while. Uh, in addition to that, uh, who uh, is in the hospital? We have six Caucasians, uh, two African Americans, and two uh, individuals that have not given us demographic information at this point. Looking at cases, uh, 3,921 positive cases up 11 since yesterday. Uh, again, w when we get information uh, from the state, oftentimes positive cases get uh, attributed to Onondaga County that don't happen. For example, the same data point yesterday was 21 cases from the state website. We actually had 11. So you can think about what 10 cases does to your averages when you're just looking at the diagnostic New York Forward page. So again, that's why we always say, uh, we're the clearinghouse of cases because Dr. Gupta and her team have to uh, go do all the contact tracing of it. So, uh, again, 11 cases since yesterday, good number. Uh, we've been in a new range, 5 to 15 now. Uh, sometimes we're a little bit more than 15. Uh, a couple days are a little bit under 5, but overall uh, a good range. Uh, out of the 11, two household contacts, one travel-related eight community spread out of the community spread, uh, three uh, of a known source, and then out of the 11, two, uh, two of the cases related to uh, college, uh, college students. Uh, active cases, 
we're monitoring 123 active cases. That's down 53 from yesterday. So uh, recoveries, 3,598. Uh, that's up 64 since yesterday. So the health department was very busy uh, getting uh, many of our residents recovered uh, and through that system. Uh, but that's very good. 123 active cases, about as low as we've been. Uh, one day we had 119. Um, but uh, I think the last time uh, we were anywhere near that was late March. So that's very, very good. Uh, looking at where the cases come from uh, and, and who's been impacted, 2,251 female, 1,670 male, 363 are under 19, 813 in their 20s, 516 in their 30s, 462 in their 40s, uh, 583 in their 50s, 433 in their 60s, 312 in their 70s, 277 in their 80s, 162 in their 90s. Uh, back to school testing, 3,225 tests that were done uh, last week uh, from these tests, okay? Uh, there have been no positive cases from these pools. Uh, that does not mean that employees or faculty uh, since March have not gotten uh, tested positive in any of the schools uh, and I know that uh, certainly uh, before school started we had one district that had a teacher uh, or a faculty member test positive uh, and uh, but that was before school started but out of our pool uh, we had nobody test positive certainly we'll talk about and take questions on uh, the two positive cases we had and uh, uh, both at uh, Jamesville Elementary and uh, Van Buren Elementary. Dr. Gupta is with me today. We can answer some questions related to that. But uh, we're working very closely with Upstate, all of our school districts. Uh, our teams have been on calls all day long about figuring out the best testing protocol for the school year. Uh, right now, what we are developing is a testing site for schools and staff for rapid testing for symptomatic students first. Uh, and then uh, certainly this will avoid and any delay getting results and will allow the, uh, the students uh, and or uh, faculty the ability to, uh, once symptom free, get back into uh, the classroom. Uh, but that is first. Uh, in addition to that, we're working on a random sampling uh, programming, which will probably be the saliva pool sampling to try to look for that needle in the haystack, uh, that asymptomatic case uh, that's in the buildings. Um, so we knew at some point we'd get cases. When we, just like we knew with colleges opening back up, we'd get cases in every industry. We knew at some point we would have a doctor who would become positive or a nurse who would become positive who was working. Uh, that happened. Uh, the process worked well, uh, quickly uh, uh, isolated the individual, quickly quarantined. Uh, every case is different with contact tracing, uh, but certainly uh, I think uh, the process worked very, very well, and uh, we've built up the infrastructure to be able to handle this, uh, and uh, we're pleased with uh, uh, how it has played out to date so far uh, with both the Baldwinsville and uh, Jamesville DeWitt school districts. So uh, saying that, we'll take questions. Ryan, do you have any more details about the, the monitoring in schools, either the, the, the rapid test site or how you're going to do random sampling? We're working at the, the random sampling, a uh, little, bit, little bit of debate still going on between the, the doctors and the scientists about that because the infection rate's so low. So how do you best utilize that? Uh, what everybody agrees is we need rapid testing uh, when we have a symptomatic case. It, it's just too many cooks in the kitchen sometimes when you have uh, a student uh, going and then mom or dad are taking them to a pediatrician to get the test or a different lab. Uh, sometimes uh, they're going to outside the county for different rapid tests um, and just too many hands. We want to be able to know that when a staff member or a student uh, has symptoms that they have a place to go so that we can communicate directly with our health department so that if we get that positive we can immediately start contact tracing uh, and we don't lose any time so we'll probably we're working with upstate on that and we'll probably have that set up by the end of the week 
uh, and hopefully by the end of the week we'll also have uh, a, uh, a protocol for saliva-based uh, kind of proactive testing in the districts. What makes that unique compared to the community health center where symptomatic testing has been available since March? Well, this would be uh, a, a testing site that we, we would direct any student from a district to go to specifically, and we would have direct points of contact uh, with our health department and with that, that lab uh, so that we would then uh, get alerted immediately, not have it go through the eclairs system at the state, take a day, come back through to us. Um, and so uh, that, that's kind of, we want to streamline that process. And that would be a, a, a how, how rapid a test are you talking about? In terms yeah, we've been looking at it, you know, hopefully within four, four hours. Four hours can be different depending on when they get there um, and, and when, you know, how the rapid testing equipment works. But uh, certainly we think uh, we'd like to know within the, the four-hour period, which is pretty standard now for rapid testing. That will be at Upstate? Not sure exactly yet, but probably. Is that optional for a student or teacher sent home with coronavirus symptoms? No. And how do you follow up making sure that process happens? Well, they won't be able to come back to school, I believe. Uh, and again, Dr. Gupta can always pinch me if I'm wrong. But I believe that uh, the, the, right now, under the State Department of Health guidance, if a student has uh, symptoms of COVID, uh, they then go and get a test, and then you need the negative result, plus they need to be symptom-free. Dr. Gupta brought up uh, to many people, there's other infectious diseases that have similar symptoms. So if somebody is COVID negative, uh, which most people will be, but they still have other symptoms where they could spread that stomach bug or other things off to other children, we don't want them back in school. They need to, they need to get better first. Um, but that's the state DOH guidance right now is um, you do not come back into the building until you have that COVID test negative and or uh, and you're then symptom free of whatever uh, led everybody to make you get a test. But they're still free to go to their own pediatrician, which you've said just a moment ago might not be the quickest way, but that's still their option. I'm wondering how you incentivize yeah, with, 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 a, with a, the health of a child, and you're talking to a father here too, so nobody is going to tell a parent you have to go to that site. Certainly, uh, I think the pediatricians would agree that setting up a streamlined process instead of most of the pediatricians utilize national labs, which are doing much better now, uh, but still not uh, as quick as what we're talking about here. So I don't think there will be a lot of disagreement within the medical community about the process here. Uh, but I, and again, parents, they're in charge of their children. They're their children. If they want to go to the pediatrician uh, and have the test there, that's their call. Would what? school nurses refer them there? To yeah, yeah, we would widely communicate what, where, where the, the, the fastest and best systems will be in place. Why wasn't this testing set up sooner in schools? I'm just curious. Well, school started this week, so the, the, from that standpoint, we did back-to-school testing. Now we're talking about the uh, testing for symptomatic kids. This is a, there is testing set up for that. Uh, the, we all, you would get referred off to the doctor. Uh, th this parent would then make that call. What we're saying now is the 24 hours of turn time is valuable, so we're looking to streamline those 24 hours. Uh, there's, n there's not another community in the state, I believe, that's done what we've done related to back-to-school testing and setting up the infrastructure and uh, taking, uh, taking the leadership role our teams have uh, so that this doesn't become a problem uh, for the school districts. Do you have any information on, on additional cases at schools since the two uh, elementary schools? We, we do not have any new information related to that. Uh, I know that there was one case of an employee before school that got it. And I think they're very close to being uh, better, uh, if they're not better by now. Um, but that had nothing to do with our back-to-school testing. That was in advance of that. Um, but we do not. We, you know, just like we get probably a couple cases from college kids each day. Uh, we will probably have situations where we'll have ch children going into quarantines quite a bit during the course of the process because they'll be positives. Mom or dad will be positive. 
brother or sister could be positive, an aunt or uncle could be positive. Um, but uh, certainly the first two cases, uh, we were alerted to them, quickly worked with the superintendents and, and uh, the leadership of the buildings. Uh, every case is different when it comes to who needs to be in a quarantine. So there's not a one size fits all approach. Uh, and uh, certainly these two cases were different when it came to that. So, uh, but overall, uh, everybody's very comfortable with uh, the contact tracing efforts and the response. I have some questions for Dr. Gupta, please. Doctor. Hi. Hi. Um, I just wanted to get your reaction to, you know, us already seeing positive cases in schools, especially since, you know, not everyone's gone back yet. So what, what can we kind of expect when everyone's back K through 12? So as I have mentioned, right, we have very low tra community transmission. Uh, despite we will have cases wherever we walk. Uh, one of the places is schools, and the schools are open now. We have cases in restaurants, churches, um, uh, any other workplaces, hospitals. Uh, so it, is a, it was the matter of time, and it happened in the first week. Uh, so the anxiety is going to be high. But uh, I, I'm very confident in our capability of case investigation and contact tracing, along with the strong collaboration with our school superintendents and their health teams, which includes medical director, uh, as well as nursing, and our team leadership in our health department. So this is a constant um, communication. We have actually put a significant processes in place to get there. The reason it worked this weekend quite well in that that we have those processes put forward, that if we have a case, and as soon as we have a case, we actually go and then try to identify the, all the contacts and find all the information about the environment and provide recommendation to the school, uh, you know, whether it's uh, the class should be canceled or if there's anything else needs to be done. So that is, uh, that's the process is, I think, seem to be working well, and I'm comfortable with time. We all will continue to learn, and I think anxiety of everybody will be somewhat down with the time. It just becomes, yes, we have the cases. And what else can we do to reduce the transmission of virus? So um, that's how I would approach it, and I hope that's what be true for all our superintendent. And we have been in continuous com communication with them, including before I came. Absolutely. Um, I just had a few questions about the Jamesville Elementary um, case as well. Do you know how many people are in quarantine now because of that case? So in general, um, we do not disclose any specific information uh, because the school has been extremely very helpful. They, they both schools have been very cooperative, uh, provided every information which we have asked of them and also have reached out to the families uh, who we needed to be reaching out. So at this point, if there's no general threat to public health, there's no reason for that information. It just does not add to the health and security of the, of the, on our county. So we do not tend to disclose that, and I think I hope everybody will respect that. You've told me before that each case is its own case when it comes to contact tracing. G generically, what parameters do you look at in the classroom setting to figure out if the whole classroom and teacher needs to quarantine right. or not. Because if they're six feet apart wearing masks, right. would that result in everyone quarantining? What, what can you say about the, right. the general? So it's a great question. And as we, this is the first week we are opening this, right? The schools are open. Everybody's coming from different backgrounds, different homes and different, they, they bring their, we bring ourselves to either work or school. So everybody have their different exposures, and they are all congregating in a common space now. So yes, the six feet rule, certainly we look for, and we look for how big is the room is, whether people were, kids were wearing masks, teacher was wearing masks. All these things are really very important. However, in first couple of weeks, or three to four weeks even more, as we learn, how good the kids are sitting in their seats, right? Are they taking the mask off when they're eating? Or are they really lining up when they're supposed to? 
uh, is the teacher very comfortable about these things? So a lot of those small, fine details help us to make the decision at this point, and as we go through the quarantine of these, uh, uh, this class or whatever recommendation we provide to, uh, to each school district, we learn along with that. It means that how many, if anybody, converted, because if some of them will get tested from five to seven days from the time of the exposure, it gives another indication for us to do, okay, this worked at this time. What are they wearing? What the te does the teacher feel very comfortable about? She has a visual, uh, he or she has a visual of the students, and kids are following all the recommendation of the teacher. And that will also depend on the, you know, how young or how old the kids are. Uh, so a lot of those things are, right now, we are going to be more restrictive rather than more kind of, you know, uh, as the time goes, I think our comfort level will be a little bit better in terms of so would the teachers and so would the parents. So we have to learn along with the side, with the school, that this is the science tells us. Let's try to apply into our individual cases in these scenarios. And then we make the recommendation. So right now, when we say quarantine the whole classroom, that is very important for us to see what happens to those. Did anybody convert at that point, right, if people get tested? Not necessarily. Everybody doesn't need to be get tested. If we are, if the parents do decide at that point, we say you can recommend testing five to seven days. And it will be um, the uh, two weeks down the road, we'll go through the different scenario and what happens in a month. I think it, it, it is a work in progress at this point. What does the health department call in a decision versus what the school district calls in a decision when it comes to quarantines? So we follow the state, CDC and state guidelines, and then we apply our own experiences, what we have dealt with, uh, you know, in whether um, having a conference in somewhere, whether we saw in different other workplaces, how those things did work. And the school, uh, the school cannot be less restrictive than us. They can be more restrictive. So we provide, okay, we are going to say that this school, um, you know, this class needs to be canceled and all the kids need to be quarantined. Um, and then we do not, if we do not, we, if we did, and we have no reason to recommend at this point school closure because we didn't see any issues. Uh, but if school can be more restrictive because of their own responsibility. So finally, that happens in cases of flu or anything else because, you know, that's, that's, that's their turf. So we have to defer to them. But we have to provide our recommendation. So you could quarantine only a few children, but the school could decide to quarantine an entire class? That's, no, no. No, not quarantining. So quarantine, we are going to quarantine to official quarantine is gets the commissioner's order, right? It means we are seeing that we are defining this as exposure. Uh, but we kind of, kind of can say that, okay, you can provide an alert to those that there was a case and people can watch out, but not everybody. If you are in a, this classroom and you are on the other side, there's no reason for us to put quarantine to that. When we are talking about a school closure versus the, 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 superintendent or principal cannot do a quarantine order. That quarantine order comes only from the health department. Uh, closure of school, that is up to there, but public health measures, that's where we provide it. I hope that's clear. That's an important distinction. So you are the only party that can order a quarantine. That's right. But a superintendent could choose to cancel that class for two weeks. Uh, so yes, we can provide, the, we will provide, this is what we provide that this is a cancellation. We are recommending that you, you know, cancel this class until 14 days, everybody's quarantined. Um, that is up to the principal that if he or she wants to take further. But we will do, actually, we are pretty strict, restrictive in, in this situation also. So we are being very restrictive in terms of that, no, we are, want to protect more at this point. Um, and uh, closure of a school, um, we are not recommending at this point. Because for Van Buren, it was an entire class, I'm using the word carefully, asked to quarantine, but now those other classmates don't have to? I'm, 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 we've gotten some different information today. I don't know so how the, all the quarantine, the, the quarantine, if that, let's say, you know, I don't know, depending on, if you have 10 kids in the class, and if the kid was, a, I'm just throwing a random number, 
Um, and though all, if we consider this kid, they all were exposed, we consider because of what we got information, um, then they all are going to be in official quarantine. Their parents, uh, because they're minor, they will get the order for the quarantine 14 days. They stay home 14 days, um, and they cannot come to the classroom. It means the entire classroom is in quarantine. The rest of the school can go on with as usual. The case is the household contacts and anybody around the case will be quarantined also. So the case is in isolation for 10 days. So is that clear? Did that happen in Baldwinsville? I mean, that's what we recommend. I'm just giving you a scenario. I think you can ask the superintendent. We don't go into the detail because there's no right. public health threat. So we stick to our recommendation to the superintendent and then he or she is going to decide how they communicate. We provide them recommendation um, and then to the parents essentially. So we directly communicate with the parents of those quarantine children. Has the county added more contact tracers in anticipation of uh, cases in schools? No. So, yeah. Yeah. So the only thing is that we have contact tracers. New York State Department of Health uh, has provided our um, uh, the virtual contact tracer with the Bloomberg philanthropy. They continue to be a significant part of our workforce. They work alongside with us, so they are pretty much for all practical purposes. They don't do case investigation. They do only contact tracing, so they come into the picture. Yeah, so we, we haven't brought on more people. We aren't even using the people we trained. The, remember, when we had to meet a 200-person contact tracing number, um, we, were, we had 40, 50 cases a day, uh, and now we're dealing with 5 to 15 a day. Um, but, Andrew, to, to what's important is, again, Dr. Goop is not going to talk specifically about the case. I think th with some of our superintendents, and we were just on the phone with them, th this is all new turf, so some of the language they use is different. Uh, but Dr. Gupta and the health department can quarantine. That's an official order. The, su the school districts cannot. Uh, you had two cases, two different schools. The uh, districts handled them differently. Uh, one of the districts chose not to have school today, so they can go clean. That did not come from us. That came from that school district. They made that decision. That's where they have uh, the authority uh, to, to make that call for their own buildings. Uh, but when it comes to quarantining, every case is different, just like every example we've had. Uh, and it's all about direct exposure, direct contact. If you took your John Hopkins uh, certi certification, I believe a direct contact is what, 10 minutes, Dr. Gupta? Yeah, so for the state, it's 10 minutes. 10 minutes, yeah. CDC, 15 for the state. Yeah, so it's 10 minutes of direct contact within six feet of a person. So um, when you look at it, there's, there's not going to be, I know I've had questions about what's the cookie cutter approach, how do you do this? Uh, there, there's contact tracing that's done every day uh, and it's the same approach uh, but when you have a case now what's different is you have part of the the cases direct contacts are potentially children and, and their friends in school but it's also potentially mom or dad brothers and sisters aunts and uncles neighbors so we have a case we're doing contact tracing for the whole uh, the whole case not just looking at who they're uh, in class with. Are you aware though of a shift in the Baldwinsville, I don't know if it's quarantine or class cancellation, I don't know what the word is, but, but was it an entire class and now it's just a, a direct people now? Are you aware of any? I don't think so. I think, I, I think there's just language, definition, communication differences. We were just talking to the superintendent 20 minutes ago, so uh, I, I don't think there's been any shift uh, related to that. I think there's just some confusion over verbiage. In Jamesville, with the school being shut down today for deep cleaning, what exactly does that entail, a deep cleaning? I, I'm, not, I'm not sure. We didn't recommend uh, the shutdown. That was something that the superintendent thought uh, just to, from, from a precaution standpoint, uh, just to deal with some anxiety. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure what happened. Uh, if it was something that uh, we thought was necessary, we would have recommended it. Um, but that wasn't um, you know, something we recommended. How many, uh, how many high school kids did you get Friday for 
three schools. Right? I'm not sure, Tim, um, how many we got. Uh, I can we can ask Dan if he has a breakdown. I know Friday was our busiest day because uh, we had uh, quite a few uh, faculty members from different um, schools coming, but also some teachers or uh, some students as well. But we can do that. But I think we, you know, what's, what's unique about you know our first case is you know in younger demographic. We've only had 34 people in this demographic out of 4,000 to date. So it's kind of unique that this is the first case in a school. I would have thought would have been one of our older uh, students. Um, but uh, certainly when we're looking at the, the testing, uh, saliva pool testing, at least I think, you know, heavy focus in on the demographics where we've seen the most cases. Yeah, you've expressed a lot of concern in the past about older high school kids um, getting together, congregating, and I'm sure you've seen some of the pictures from the beginning of school, the Baldwinsville kids and, and so on, that um, they sort of go around social media and get shamed for, for gathering like that. Uh, I wonder, what are your thoughts about that? Because they are kids, but... Uh, yeah, it, it's, you, you can understand why the kids are excited and they're doing traditions. Um, just the challenge is, is that they're uh, a senior in 2020 in the year of the COVID-19 pandemic. So everybody needs to continue to modify their behavior uh, so they can be together during the year, right? If uh, the way that we're not together uh, is if we have a serious uptick in cases over five, six, seven percent positive rates all of a sudden. Uh, so the best way to keep us together is to uh, certainly uh, do the smart things that work, physically distance. If you're going to be within, if you're going to be with each other, wear a mask if you're that close. Uh, I think it's different if you're with your brother and sister, mom and dad, having a picnic together than it is being with 48 other kids just because that, those 40 other kids come from their own networks, as Dr. Gupta uh, referenced earlier. So I, I get it, I, 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 you know, it's, it's tough. I know those kids got a lot of heat, and I know there's some other pictures out there too, different districts, um, and you understand that, but um, we, we need to be a little bit smarter to stay on scale with the, with the virus uh, to make sure that we keep the, the positive rates and infection rates where they are. Back. Do you think that heat will help inhibit other kids from doing that? I think it does. I, I, I think it does. I think uh, if you relate, it, it, was, it seems like a distant memory, but uh, first week on campus with Syracuse University, we had the freshmen, some of the freshmen getting up, making a mistake. Well, uh, very published incident across the country. Um, and look at the success we've had now in the data from the testing program. Uh, that's A lot of it has to do with the fact that you pre-screened and caught the virus before it came in, uh, but a lot of that has to do with the behavior uh, and the commitment of those students uh, to uh, re really change and modify their behavior. So we need the same thing for our younger people too, um, and uh, and certainly uh, because everybody's bought into this for the most part uh, through this process and it's been long, uh, we've had a lot of success. Point zero point three three percent seven day average. Uh, that's pretty impressive. Back to the Jamesville student uh, case. Do you know if the student who was tested was wearing a mask? Um, did they have their temperature taken before entering the school? I, I'm not sure what the school's protocols are. I'm pretty sure they probably do have temperature taking. Uh, specifically, I, I know that we're very comfortable with the, the case in Jamesville and the contact tracing. Uh, and I know that uh, the most important thing is that both of these young students are doing well. You're comfortable in both cases? Very comfortable. Meaning the, the people who were in immediate exposure have been contacted, are aware of what ne next step yeah, they need? Yeah, I, I think overall the systems are in place uh, for uh, Dr. Gupta and their team. The difference is this is back to school, right? These are our, our children, and there's a lot of anxiety going into this. So uh, the process worked. It worked on a weekend. So uh, everything was being done on a Saturday and a Sunday. Uh, so. Uh, I, I think that just shows you our operation doesn't sleep, uh, and uh, we're going to do everything we can to make sure that kids can go back to school and have uh, a, a great year. 
and uh, make the best of what we're all going through. And uh, certainly, two cases, we got them. We're going to have more, right? We're going to be tested. Uh, anxiety is going to be tested throughout this. But eventually, once we've, go, we've gone through the process a couple times, it will build that confidence uh, from the faculty. It will build the confidence from the parents uh, and the students. And then, uh, you know, th then you move on. Every, every time uh, you have a case, people aren't holding their breath, uh, you know, the, the way that you are in the beginning of, with all of this. I know you're working on a broader strategy, but will you do any targeted testing in either of those schools now that there's a positive or wastewater testing in either building? Uh, what we'll see is what we'll probably, in, and again, for the one, di the one district, um, when we have more quarantines with a case than others, you'll, on Dr. Gupta, reference this on day five through seven of the quarantine, uh, we'll offer up that testing. Uh, even though they'll still be in a quarantine after, uh, that gives you a pretty good sense if you're going to have a positive. Uh, but right now, if you had a situation where uh, there was a thought that that student had broad exposure in the school, we'd probably be doing uh, some different things right now. But we're very comfortable with uh, both investigations. Uh, and really, for us to, uh, with these investigations, to go through this process in the beginning, uh, I, I think this exercise has gone very, very well. Um, with Central New York being the second highest region in our area for positive cases, uh, can you confirm if this is because, you know, the colleges in our area are testing so much and having some positive cases as well? Are you getting that off of the New York Forward page? Well, I would dispute the New York Forward page to begin with, but to continue to answer your question, though, um, I, with, without question, uh, Oswego County, uh, the SUNY Oswego having 100 plus cases, um, when normally that, that county does a couple, 200, 300 tests a day, maybe one or two cases a day, all of a sudden you put 100 in there in a week. Uh, the other thing that hit the uh, the percentages on New York Forward this week in cases, we had 20 last week, probably one of our best weeks we've had here in Onondaga County, 20 cases of out-of-jurisdiction cases. What that is is a kid gets uh, COVID at Siena, Buffalo, Oneana, Oswego. They're from Onondaga County. They come here and isolate. So that case becomes our case, even though they didn't get the virus in our community. So if you look at our data, 0.33 seven-day average and 20 of those cases in that aren't, didn't even happen here, um, it shows you where it is. So uh, if you look, our numbers are more accurate than New York Forward's. New York f for one day out of, even if you look at New York Forward's numbers, uh, one day out of probably six months that we were the number one region in the whole state, okay, it was one day, Not, you know, so. Um, and again, that's just diagnostic tests that drive those numbers. When more than half the tests in your region are now saliva tests, which they are, with Cortland, SUNY Cortland, SUNY Oswego, all of our six colleges, everything we're doing, y y those numbers don't mean as much anymore. What, what about the state? You mentioned that the state had you know, 21 cases for Onondaga County when you had 11. That's a pretty big discrepancy. What, what accounts for it? I think they, they get reassigned often. Sometimes uh, they'll, we'll get a case, they'll get reassigned to Oneida or one of the counties around us. Uh, and so that's why we don't really uh, get too excited when uh, we see the state numbers. We wait to see what the 24-hour the period brings in. Sometimes we'll get a couple more than the state numbers are. Uh, but what we've seen recently, especially with these out-of-jurisdiction cases, it seems since colleges started, that the numbers, uh, there's more conflict with the numbers than usual. Will you lose a, a number if somebody from out of, out of jurisdiction goes elsewhere? You would, but the problem is with that, with that math, it was working against us, right? Because we have had so few cases out of our six institutions here locally. So, it, it, and if you look at SU, most of the kids from SU are coming from out of state. So we don't, you know, that they're not going home to isolate, they're staying here. Uh, and so uh, we have not benefited from the swapping of COVID positive college students. Uh, we, we are g getting the negative side of it.
I don't want to belabor this too long, but I mean, how long are these, how, how many times are these reported? You, you, you take a test in Onondaga County or in Oswego County, and that result goes to the state, it gets reported once, right? Yeah, yeah, so, so, what, so it go, Tim, I couldn't answer that question, with the except that we are the only ones that do contact tracing and do the isolation uh, and the, uh, the orders and the quarantine and isolation orders. Uh, and it's been, the data can be off based off of the timing of when you report out data. Uh, but recently the data has been off based off of numbers. And sometimes you'll get a number that's different and then the next few days, it seems like you pick up those cases the next few days. But for the last week to 10 days, ever since the back to school testing has happened, there's been uh, more discrepancies between uh, what we actually get in cases. Now maybe tomorrow I'll get 10 more cases than the New York Forward website says today, right? They said we're gonna have 15 cases tomorrow, I think. Uh, maybe we'll have 25 tomorrow and that 10 got delayed somehow. Uh, but it, it's, uh, there's a discrepancy. I don't know, I don't know, I'm not in charge of it. With this specific testing site, site for students only um, that you were talking about earlier, what do you think the biggest benefit of that will be? How beneficial do you think it will be? I think it's good because it will streamline um, good communication for the families. It will streamline turn times uh, for us on contact tracing. Uh, and uh, that's really what it's about, right? If you can pick up 24 hours, 36 hours, uh, it's very helpful. Uh, and, and not that, look at right now, we've built up this capacity to do rapid testing and uh, faster testing uh, than the national labs right now. So uh, we should utilize it w every step of the way when we can. We're very lucky. We have Upstate now that has their own test right here. They're, the labs are right here in our community. We should use that power and that testing power as much as we can. And so that's what we're, we're doing. And, and we're doing it with in, in areas where you, you, you see people coming together in large numbers. Uh, that's our schools, that's our colleges. And uh, you know, we'll, we'll talk to nursing homes about this too. Some nursing homes I think have gotten rapid tests. Um, so, uh, but overall where people come together on a daily basis, uh, we need to be more, more active because we know the virus can spread quickly. Anything else? Okay, we will uh, see everybody back on Thursday then. Thank you.